the uh, the bread giver but we also have to make to start baking our own bread yeah. and maybe build some bakeries and this is where i think um, the relationship is really about offering the opportunities for us the programmers and not only in uganda but the, the rest of the continent um, and as we said last time that really the idea of opening it up to the anglophone africa is a very good opportunity to kind of balance the investment that the French have done in the past. In one way, one would say that it has been a guilt con uh, you know, initiative because of what has happened in the past by the French. But at the same time, I think for me as a person and as a programmer, I don't see the, um, uh, the bad intentions of uh, what the government, the French government now is trying to do, because to be honest, they have you know they have they have their share of problems as well but if they look at africa as a, a way of engaging with the young people and investing in those young people i think we should give them some credit and i think for us as programmers it's really a good opportunity that we are going to be able to engage at a kind of a leveled ground with the rest of the programmers from the french uh, french speaking countries okay talking of that faisal um ugandan at uh, of course, uh, I've been at the forefront of coming up with new things, and we're discussing the 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 the, the emerging and the rising influence of the African art on the global stage and recognition that is coming along with it. Mm. What does this really mean from this relationship going forward? Do you think that we're headed to something good? Are we being given the right deal, you know, recognition that we need, or uh, the world is just giving us, uh, you know, you know, you know, they say, oh, it's nice, it's nice, it's good, it's yeah. good, but we're not good. Are we really good that we can now compete on a global stage? Um, I mean, we've been working. The, when you look at the history of the performing arts here in Uganda, yeah. it's, um, it's had its, you know, Himalaya kind of uh, process, like yeah. up and downs. And this was due to, you know, some of the challenges, uh, some were political, mm -hmm. some were social, some have been economical, but also, um, uh, I think, technical in a way that uh, most of the challenges we faced are because our peers are not technically uh, uh, capacitated to take the industry ahead. Yeah. And uh, most of the people are really, uh, they find themselves by chance or mm -hmm. by effort to be artists or musician and they don't have the technical knowledge or the technical skills that they need to be to be better mm -hmm. they learn along the way because we've seen some success stories mm -hmm. and uh, uh, some of the people who are really making an effort to do better mm -hmm. to be at the, at the at the level where they should be or better than what they should be and uh, but when you look at the history that uh, the performing arts were good in yeah. the 70s and yeah. the 60s and uh, of course during the war between the uh, the late 70s and uh, early 2000 or early 19s there was nothing much going on because we are kind of you know in a very unstable environment a lot of people lost their interest in the arts and they moved on to other things or they migrated um, as it's the same thing now we could see with covid most of the people that have been locked down for two years, just in, within this period of two years, yeah. they have kind of migrated to other avenues because yeah. they could not survive this lockdown and the idea that they have no opportunity to do performances. Yeah. So um, the same thing I think uh, will be happening in the, next, in the near future. If we want to present art to the French market, to the French audience, what are we going to deliver? And I think that's a question of uh, not only we, the programmers, because we just program content. Yeah. I'm also always looking out for good content. Yeah. If it's not good, I don't program it. Yeah. So if there is no content because people have left the uh, industry to other things because of the situation as, it, as we've all experienced it, yeah. what are we going to do? And as going back to our conversation last week is to see that we can, now we know the opportunities are there. Yeah. Can we start working towards preparing ourselves? to be able, when the opportunity arises, that we are able to deliver the content that is needed to be. Wow. So do you think that um, the, 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 the artist, the performing art, you know, talents are working towards this? Do they understand what this relationship means? 
do they understand what France is talking about? Are we taking advantage of this conversation to say, hey, wait, there's now a new market open for us here, new market open in the Francophone countries that we need to be able to take advantage of. We need to be able to start working and preparing the content to actually speak across these boundaries that we were not doing before. You do you be, see the sense of that? Yes, you'll be very surprised. Not necessarily for the yeah. French, yeah. I would say. I don't think everyone now I know working on something is because of their aware mm. of the new relation between France and Africa. Yeah. I think not so many people know. They heard about, if they did hear about, they heard about the conference, they yeah. heard about who went there, but they don't know what came out of it. And yeah. it's not really yet public. Uh, it, the, the information of the outcome is not yet in the public domains. Yeah. So what is happening here, you will be actually surprised that there is a lot of effort mm -hmm. going in in, co in creating content. Yeah. There are so many people doing a lot of stuff here, amazing stuff. And you'll be surprised that in the near future, I think this environment, this COVID situation has offered an opportunity to so many creative entrepreneurs, creative artists, not all art forms, yeah. you know, but at least the theater has been very much marginalized in that case. But when you look at film, music, when you look at fashion, when you look at, uh, you know, um, uh, new media art forms like visual arts and there's a lot of stuff that guys have been creating. Yeah. So we are very happy and we are very, open, uh, you know, lucky that people have not really taken their time to not do anything, but they have really created stuff. And I'm almost surprised to see that even contemporary dancers are going back to the studio to start working, you yeah. know. Theater is also starting to pick up, but though very much online. So there's a lot of content. I'm not really worried about that. I think what I'm worried about is the process of knowing how to go about engaging with other francophonic people. Okay. Um, um, Sometimes, Faisal, when we create content like this, we the content is created for a very small niche market that doesn't cut across the wider perspective of the market. Mm. And, 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 and so if this new relationship that France is talking about is open, it means that new opportunity for the you know, performing arts in Uganda, in Kenya, in East Africa, in West Africa, in North Africa, and you know, in Central Africa to now start, you know, cross-culturally bring their, you know, their art form together from the Anglophone, mm. uh, you know, countries to mm. the Francophone countries. We're now not just doing, this is uh, Francophone, everything is about the French-speaking people, and mm. then uh, if you don't speak French, it's up to you. Mm. And then uh, it's about the English-speaking people, and if you don't speak, uh, you know, English is really up about you. That's how things have been going on. But right. I think that that heist is being broken right now. Yeah. So do you think that we understand the importance of this and we can start we are beginning to create content in line with this relationship or not yeah. and what should be done from the programmers no, point but of view? I, I think if you really look at the trend of content yeah. co creation here you realize that the the uh, those there are those that have already transcended yeah. this uh, smaller market that we are looking at because to be honest, Uganda is not a market for theater. Yeah. Okay, maybe downtown theater, but Valley, but when you go to the uptown theater, there's no market for it. Yeah. So where do our, uh, entrepreneurs or artists or creators in, in theater look for? They go to the Sundance. They go to the Sinophonic countries, that is the Chinese, the Asian-speaking countries. Yes. They go to the Lusophone, to the uh, Francophone. They look at the Anglo... Uh, they don't look at very much, of course, the Anglophone, but they really trying to tap into when you go to the uh, the sinophonic countries you know yeah. all the asian countries you will be surprised to see how many ugandans are there and uh, one time I, I was very surprised to find a group of friends who are doing a traditional dance uh, this back simba yeah touring china for six months non-stop <laughs> like 350 shows yes, yes yeah you know yeah I was like, how do you guys, uh, like, and they are there. So content has been transcending. It's just that sometimes people are in a certain environment and they are not giving others an opportunity. Yeah. Or to get to know about it and yeah. to tap into it. Yeah. And uh, that's also, I wouldn't call it, um, you know, an issue for many, but I think it would be a good opportunity. Yeah. If someone knows that there is a market for content here, you could invite others to tap yeah. into it. Yeah. So that's maybe what is a little bit lacking. But really, there is a really a very good, um, interesting, you know, uh, diversification of, uh, of distribution of content here. And many people really want to sell their content because they know they are not going to sell here. Yeah. Even if they make, even the filmmakers, they're making film, they sell them to South Africa. 
they are, they are writing scripts, they want to go to Sundance because that's, the, that's where they know that content is understood, content is appreciated, content is from its role perspective. Yeah. Sometimes people, when they see a film, they just see a film. They don't look at the process. They don't really imagine the process. Yeah. So if you are part of this, you know, understanding, trying to figure out how to deliver something to yes. the market, yes. and you don't know who is able or people are not able to understand the process, then you have to go to those who understand it. Yeah. And that's why you find most Ugandans are now, and I, I'll say this again, I always find it very sad to see that so many Ugandans have disappeared mm -hmm. to, the, to, to Europe and America. People would be great artists here. They have disappeared, you know, and they are living there of course, some of them are continuing their careers, others are not because of, you know, the situation, different environments. But it would be really, really sad to see that many more young people are moving out of the country to go and perform in, the Europe, in, uh, in Europe and America and Asia because there's nothing they can do here. So that content, if it was produced here and developed here and, sh and distributed from here, it would give us also a boost in our own content development. Wow. Well, thank you very much, Faisal. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, Faisal and I will return discussing something around about the understanding of the relationship between France and Africa, the new relationship. What does it mean? We're breaking down the performing arts. What, when we talk about the performing arts, uh, you know, market or, you know, industry, what does it really mean? Who fits where? What is it? What does it mean? Because we're talking about this thing as a blanket statement, but you're going to find some people are still lost, don't know what to do. But also, we will talk about, you know, this new Africa-France relationship. What does it mean? Is it making sense to most people who are actually in this industry? Do they understand what we're talking about? As the French people also done, the French government done much to actually come out to, you know, further this discussion how has it been received from the african country's perspective do the african leaders understand this are they seeing it as a way of making you know creating this industry to collaborate or they're seeing it as a way of a political but, gain you know to, but also to yes, but also yeah. to add on to that i yes. think also we need to understand that when we talk about france we're yes. not talking only about France, the country, yes, yes. but it, France also has its territories, yes, you yes. Know, like Réunion, Dominica, whatever, yes, 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 yes. all these French speaking, exactly. and that they, you know, uh, they call them territories, yes. they, are, uh, they are still under France, yes. and they have like next, uh, I think early next year, next month, I'll be going to a French territory, yes. which is uh, in the Indian Ocean, yes. so you find that there are also other opportunities, Not they, let's not only look at Paris. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. because it's open up for it's everyone, open and of course we want to come back and have that discussion. So you want to you know be part of this conversation stay right there we'll be right back after this this is the creative industry talk my name is Eddie Okela Faiza Chiwewa and we'll be right back after this break cannot stand on its own. Bubu must stand on the foundation of self-love. Yes. Now, by the time you start saying, by this, our own, yeah. it makes sense when you already love yourself. Yes. But we seem, <laughs> we seem to have a country, and yes, so they yes. already had that foundation. The Nigerians are proud of themselves. Yeah. If you ever interacted with any Nigerians, yeah. you'll be amazed. Nigerians, have, I've met Nigerians at airports, and they can be four Nigerians, and you'll think they are 50 Nigerians. There's this <laughs> attitude they take that <laughs> wherever we yes, are, yes. we must own yes, that yes, space. Yes, yes. And we might, must own that space with, without apology. Yes. <laughs> and let the, let the world notice that we are there. We are there. We are present. Yes. So, <laughs> and, and you've seen the same attitude in Americans. Yeah. From their movies projected through so many things, yes. through so much content, yeah. from the brandy, from uh, from clothing to uh, movies to music. So in a way, when you get exposed to that attitude long enough, yeah. you start to move, move your <laughs> your your mindset towards them. Yeah. So unless it's like a magnetic force of sorts. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have our own magnetic force, and we spend too much time on negativity around ourselves. I think before we even uh, preach Bubu, we need to 
have a campaign around self-love to reduce the negativity. Yeah. Every time I see, we see uh, each other doing something amazing. Oh, oh, oh Eddie is, has just done this. Ah, but he's not, but he's not doing this other thing. Yeah. But this other thing is lacking in his yeah. thing. <laughs> Instead of, of focusing yeah, on, yeah, on the yeah. good stuff yeah, he has yeah, done, yeah, yeah. that's what those people are doing. Yeah. Even the bad stuff is there. Yeah. But w w how often do you see uh, for example, there are street people in America. The whole world knows. In, in right, right in in California, yeah. in in the the biggest economy in yeah. in among the U.S. states, yeah. there are street people. They call it, there's those areas in Hollywood, I think, called Skid Row, yes. where the the street people are not any different from our yes. what, <laughs> our street. They're even worse than ours. Yeah. And these hours here are better. We have food there. It's yeah. very difficult. Yeah, yeah you go, yeah. but they keep away from that. They even yeah. try as much as possible to. To keep cameras away it's only the internet today because that is uh, enabling us to see those things yeah but these have been there for so many years how mu how much attention have we given to to hollywood content but we've never seen all of that so i think for boo boo to make sense and for yeah. boo boo it needs to stand on the foundation of self-love we need a campaign around loving ourselves and reducing the negativity yeah. and, and then we can talk boo boo Welcome back from that break. This is a Creative Industry Talk. My name is Eddie Okela and of course in the studio is Faizo Chiwewa from the Bayimba Cultural Foundation and we are discussing the new Africa French the new Africa France relationship. What does it mean? There's a conference that happened in 2021 in Montpellier and Ugandans attended that. Many Africans, 3000 people from African continent attended that. And of course the new Africa France summit, what does it really mean? for Uganda's creative industry, particularly in performing arts industry. What does it mean? Are we taking advantage of that? And of course, we're hosting Faizo today, and as a resident panelist to discuss this, Faizo, welcome back to the program. Sure. Before we went for a break, we were breaking the, are, you, are we ready for this new relationship going forward? Is our content being prepared towards that direction? Mm. We want to tackle this a little bit more. The French may have talked about this, and at the point where we were going into a break, you talked about the territory is not Paris. It is no, it's not just Paris. It's, it extended to where the French, the Francophone, you know, territories, to, so to speak, colonies. colonies, where people are speaking French, mm -hmm. and it is a language. And I've been meeting people from Guadalupe, mm -hmm. you know, I've been meeting people from different other places, the islands, and, and everybody's talking about this is a good place for us, a good start for us. But um, I want to just pick your mind from the person who attended the you know, conference, the summit in Montpellier. The African presidents were not invited, but the young people from Africa were invited. And we know very well from the African perspective that sometimes we focus a little bit more on politics than the content that comes with. What was the sense, do you think rather that the African president will support their own creative arts industry towards they, this? They don't have a stake in it. I think um, um, I don't do politics, you know. Um, yeah. I'm never interested in the game. But I also know that uh, when it comes to these kind of initiatives, uh, the, government's, uh, the government's role is very limited. It's only them doing what they are supposed to do or what they should have been doing already yeah. like making sure that the regulations are good copyright is implemented and intellectual property is protected you know these are the these are the government responsibilities yeah. but they have no stake in the implementation of a partnership if i want to do a collaboration with a french producer or a french artist I can contact them on email and if uh, there is any opportunity for support from uh, the French embassy or the French government or FD, that's our conversation. The government has not taken it. I think here for me what I would like to emphasize on is to see how do we identify the territories, the areas that we can engage in mm -hmm. as performing artists or mm -hmm. producers or programmers. Yeah. I think. When we talk about the performing arts, as you say, that it's not only music, it's not only theater, but there are so many other things. 
and how do we know that within France or its territories there are opportunities for all these different art forms? Which areas support what kind of art forms? Because France is diverse and also with its territories, but there is a lot of areas that are more known for different things. For example, if you want to do like a market, you know, there is a, uh, there is a medium, which is a, like a door door. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's one of the biggest French um, music market. Mm -hmm. And do people know about medium? Do Ugandan musicians know about medium? Or they might have heard of door door, but they know, they, do they know that there is a bigger medium? Now that there is an opportunity for this exchange and say, how can we start preparing our musicians to be able to showcase at Midem? Mm -hmm. Because it's an opportunity. And now they have even opened the African uh, version of Midem, which has been running online for two years. Mm -hmm. So there is that opportunity of us identifying where can we go? Mm -hmm. Where can we take our content? There is Bubble Med in Marseille. Mm -hmm. It's also a big market that also takes care of, uh, you know, performing arts uh, artists from Africa. Joel has performed there. He has had opportunities. This is Joel Sabunja. This Joel Sabunja has been there. So it's, uh, these are some of the areas. Then we, when we go to theater, there are theater festivals. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, installation, video mapping, uh, you know, events and festivals. There are, there are so many fashion shows, you know, fa Paris or France is known for fashion. How can we work with people like Stella Ta to start really, because she was there, she knows where to talk to, how to engage. She's in the fashion industry. How can we start tapping into that connection and relation and start building our fashion designers to so start showcasing more in France? Mm -hmm. So these are the things I think we need to start cultivating and making sure that our artists, our performing uh, industry is aware of these opportunities. But most of the time, when you talk about these opportunities of performing as so, People mostly think about music, performing in a club or performing. And no, we need to go deeper and also try to, you know, discover new forms of art. Yeah. Because France has a lot of new forms of art. There are so many initiatives that come from there. How can we make sure that our artists are prepared to mm -hmm. tap into those opportunities mm -hmm. and also widen their scope and know that if you want, if you're talking about theater and festivals and stuff, then there are so many big festivals of theater in France and not only in France, but also in the, in the rest of Europe where people are being awarded each year with lots of money, with lots of good productions. How can we know, how can they get to know about this so that they only don't look at the Anglo Anglophone uh, countries. Okay. Talking of that, Pfizer, you bring a very good perspective to me. And I actually want some people, if you're out there and watching this video, we want to hear from you. If you're performing at, you know, talent, please share with us your thoughts, your understanding of this new relationship. Do you understand what it means? Do you know what is expected of you to be able to be on the same stage with a French you know, artist or performing art person? Do you understand from a, you know, French speaking countries artists performing art from that area do you understand what they are doing to meet the expectations of the anglophone speaking countries in africa do you understand what is expected of you Pfizer talking of that it appears that many of our conversation here normally are not looking at crossing the border we tend to be very comfortable at home here and so some things come and pass us by some things comes like they announce this and you find your guns are still not aware of this and a few people like like you know like like uh, Faisal, like peter like uh, paul charles rukundo and a few people like divine uh Nabawe. see these are the guys who are, are more outspoken outgoing are looking for these things like the bobby Ogwal of this world the people who went mm. are people who are opening up to these things but when they come back do they have this conversation with these people, with the Ugandans? Do Ugandans know this or we are comfortable doing our things locally here and, you know, everything else? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I speak for myself. I but you're a programmer. You, yeah. you, you interact with people when yeah. you're writing industry, people mm. who are in the theater industry, people who are in, um, you know, the drama industry. I mean, a lot of us are doing things locally and we seem to be comfortable. I, I don't see much of it going outside. I think I it's, a, it's, it's sometimes the excitement level. Mm. I mean, I had it as well. Yeah. Not not the not the <laughs> non sharing, but yes, uh, you yes. know at the at the beginning, yeah. I think fifteen years ago, yeah. when I just started traveling, I t I was always excited to show myself at the airport and yeah. take a selfie in yes, the plane yes. and then send it to whatever. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I think it's more like <laughs> now I know 
I go somewhere because of a reason mm -hmm. and and I'm always interested in going somewhere where I have I either add value or I'm getting something from there. Mm -hmm. These two things are very important and that's why I'm always encouraging a two way or at least be contributive. Because mm -hmm. for me, most of the time, if you want to go somewhere and you not, you really don't have a reason why you're going there, then you're wasting your time and people's money. Yeah. So it's important that maybe, maybe not, uh, but uh, sometimes is that why people don't talk about things because they are overwhelmed by the environment that they get themselves into. And they are not aware of how to deal with it. It's, a pro it's something that we all have to learn. Mm -hmm. Because even me, it took me some time to know if I go to Womex, what am I expected of? Why am I there? You know? Mm -hmm. And what am I going to get back? And what is worth my investment? And when we talk about investment, we're not talking about only the money we put in the tickets, but we're also talking about the time. You know, it's an investment. That opportunity cost is very important for the work that we are doing. So... If people are not yet, they don't get used to this getting on the plane and off. And then once you get used to that, then you can start focusing on what you're meant to do. <laughs> but once you, if you fly once a year, uh -uh, yes, 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 yes. it's going to be difficult to get yes. over it. <laughs> but if you're flying every two weeks, yes. then you'll be like, come yeah, on, yeah. why am I coming there? Mm -hmm. You know, so this is what this, this is the difference. And it's, 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 it's very honest, you know, it's very honest that if people are not used to this being with different people, getting to know different spaces and getting exposed to different areas, then it's difficult for them to go somewhere where they have a reason. And I'm lucky, uh, we are lucky these days that COVID has helped us because mm -hmm. so many times mm -hmm. people used to travel to go to a, a workshop. I'm going to uh, blah, blah, blah for a workshop on uh, human rights. I'm going to go to that. And then they reach there, they go shopping, da, 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 da. you ask them, what did you learn? Nothing. And it's because now that they realize, okay, we, we can do so much online mm -hmm. and we are also learning to, yeah. to, to also program things online. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a whole different conversation. Maybe now we can start bringing things back. Yeah. But I think for me, what is important is that wherever you want to go, wherever you're going, it's important to know what are you going to give? What are you contributing to that place, to that uh, environment, to that space, to, what, to that meeting that you're going to? And what are you going to a lot. What does it necessarily mean to, you know, for Uganda's creative industry in the performing arts, you know? And we're talking to Faiza Chiwewa from the Bayimba Foundation, fresh from that Montpellier, you know, summit in France. And uh, where well, a lot of things were discussed on that stage. They're not saying we are open to come open for you to come and you know showcase your art here we want to do this now on an equal time and equal measures it means that a ugandan can go to france and showcase african now you know operate with the francophone countries you know or territories at an equal opportunity measure as to whether it's going to be a reality it's really time will tell but are we preparing to go there and, and you know uh, you know something that uh, Pfizer has been talking about here very important if you are used to boarding a plane once or twice you know your experience is not as good as a, an artist or a performing artist from the francophone countries who are always boarding the plane they don't go to take selfies they go to do things at a different level Pfizer, that said i want to come back to you for a moment how do we get ugandans particularly from where we sit you know to start looking at this from beyond the selfies, beyond appearing in Paris and running around. I mean, I get the sense that of the 3,000 people who went to France, very few of them actually engaged themselves to discuss serious business. Most of them were running. For the first time, they were stuck and running to enter. Just the, the train wowed so many of them and took away the attention from the business and the opportunity that could have presented itself to them. And many of them were spending a lot more time for tourism purposes as opposed to trying to meet the new you know minister here or meet the new talent manager there from west africa to crack the business so that they can board the plane a little bit more <laughs> you know because this was paid for by the french government it may not come back again for the next time but how do we help our people here to know that when you get opportunity to go there don't just go for selfies. No, it's a one chance given to you. No, Use it. But I think, you know, to be honest, we all uh, 
Fenatri na malo. They call yes. it a malo. You know? yes. <laughs> now, even me myself, I, 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 I mean, I, I travel a lot. But sometimes if I go to a city like Paris, I'm like, oh, let me go to the river. Let me go to uh, see the, you know, the park. Or yeah. let me go to see the Eiffel Tower. It's something we do. Yeah. But you do it when you've at least done something that is meaningful. Or you're going to do something that is meaningful for yeah. the purpose that yeah. you're there. Yeah. You know, you're not invited for tourism. Yeah. You're yeah. invited for a certain reason. Yeah. And not everyone that is invited is going to make meaning to the yeah. contribution or, or to contribute to the conversation that is going on. Yeah. Maybe you're invited as a spectator and that's your role. But how do you how do you know how to navigate that? Mm -hmm. It's a process, to be honest, and it really needs someone to be aware of how to network, how to speak to people, how to pitch your works, how to engage with, you know, with, uh, with people, and also how to do your background research, you know, who is there? You know, if you're going in a, in a conference hall where there are 3,000 people, where do you start from if you don't know who is there? You get what I mean? Yeah. So you have to know, like, okay, if there are so-and-so is there, Faiso is there, Eddie is there, what does Eddie do? Maybe I, we have some similar interests. Mm -hmm. I met so many young people from Africa who are doing stuff. There was a guy who was working in uh, Burkina Faso and he's doing uh, recycling shoes. I'm like, what do you mean you recycle shoes? And like, you know, when your shoe is broken, you give it to me, I repair it, I design it differently, and I sell it back to you. I'm like, hmm. That's really cool, yeah. you know. And he was getting gigs. <laughs> he was getting a lot of gigs. Yeah, and there were like, yeah, all these yeah. young fashion designers, all these yeah. young creative, you know, entrepreneurs yeah. doing software, you know, games and all that stuff. And I'm like, there is a lot of workforce. There is a lot of human capital yeah. that is coming up in this in, in, in on this continent. But I think for me, what is really important, whenever I travel, and some it's not always, but most of the time when I travel, I like to admire. And, and when I look at something and I like it, I, I try to imagine it if I can do it. In my area of business, not in, not in road construction or architecture, whatever, but when I, like, when I see a good performance, when I see a good art, art form, when I see, I'll, I, I imagine it being here. That's why over the 10 years, we've managed to create new forms of art here yeah. that people are thinking like, oh, that's impossible, like video mapping, street theater, you know, like uh, sound art, you know, these kind of things that people have never, you, you go to a space and you find an artist has, you know, created something that is unimaginable and be like, how do they come up with this? How can I get this guy to teach my, uh, some of my colleagues in Uganda? And that's why every time we have a new form of art that we are introducing, we invite like 10 to 15 people but at the back of my mind, I know one or two will pick it up. Not everyone will like it or understand it. So I think if we, we I don't know how they call it, uh, like okwe gomba. I yes. don't know how it's, it's in, in English. <laughs> I, I mean, I like to... Yes, yes. I like to go, go out there, yes. look at things, imagine things. And I things admire them and I'm like, I admire them and see like, if you can come and do them here. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's the whole force that, uh, that, that keeps me moving because I know most of the things I like are not possible now. Yes. But I work towards that. And that's why I'm investing in my own space, you know, whereby we will soon be having our own Bayimba Center, where we have invested brick by brick, you know, dollar by dollar, shilling by shilling, on our own. Because I know that when you go to all these spaces in Paris and you find all these big museums, big theaters, then, you know, in New York and, and, and uh, you know, Venice, wherever you go, do we ask ourselves, who built these buildings? You know, do we know how these buildings came to exist? Some of them were not even government buildings. They were by individuals yeah. from their own effort. And maybe later on, uh, 50, 100 years later on, the government finds interest in them and starts taking care of them and opening them up to the public. Yeah. So what are we contributing to the future of our spaces? We cannot start only thinking around tomorrow, today, tomorrow, today. And I find that a very big problem. Yeah. We need to start thinking further. We need to start thinking what is going to happen a hundred years from now. What are we going to show? Are we just going to show all these, uh, you know, small uh, untaught buildings around the city? There's nothing creative about it. But we, if we had the idea of admiring what other people have, and for me it's very, very important, and I tell my, f my colleagues, even my donors, like, don't tell me about space that we don't need space we do need space from ground zero you know and everywhere but we the people in the industry have to learn 
to admire those spaces and create our own spaces that will be representing our country, our spaces, our, our, uh, our art forms in the future. Yeah. So the issue of admiring is very, very important. When you have a chance to go to other places, look around and see. And just imagine yourself being part of this new um, initiation in your own country. Yeah. How would that be? Well, we're going to take a break. Pfizer is spitting fire right now that when you fly out, you must be able to imagine things on a bigger stage and a bigger scale. And of course, we're talking about the new Africa-France relationship, the summit that happened in 2021. What does it really mean to the creative industry in Uganda, particularly this week, today? We're talking about the performing arts industry. Are we taking advantage of it? Do we know much about it? Are we beginning to prepare our work towards that? We're going to take a break. And when we come back, Creative Industry Talk will tackle. The final part of the show will be discussing how do we take the advantage of this relationship to showcase our art. And Pfizer will be sharing a few more as we close the show. So that day, I'll be right back after the break. France is happy, joyful, and proud to be France. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing we can learn from France. Yeah. France knows all about France. France celebrates France. France celebrates its history, its cuisine, its language, its music, its culture. Mm -hmm. So when we ha want to have a conversation with France, it helps if we also come from a point yeah. of celebrating our history, yeah. our culture, our heritage, mm -hmm. our food, mm -hmm. then we can have it. Because the conversation involves yeah. exchange. Yes. So we have to have something yeah. to bring forward. And if we don't yet understand ourselves fully, if we don't yet celebrate ourselves fully, mm -hmm. it's difficult to begin to share what It is a creative in talk. Welcome back to the program. My name is Eddie O'Kill and we're discussing the new Africa-France relationship. What does it really mean? This new relationship with Africa, what does it really mean to the creative industry? Particularly the performing arts is what we're discussing today. Why have we focused series on this creative industry talk talking about the meaning of this new relationship to the creative arts industry in Uganda and across Africa? It's because creativity is at the core of everything we do. Every time we wake up in the morning, we're talking about creative ways of how do we sell this product? How do we get product A to the market? How do we get product B to the market? How do we attract other people to come and sell our culture to them so that we can make money? You know, it's all about creativity. No one wakes up in the morning and do not know what to do creatively to attract money to them. Value is attracted to where there is value. And of course, Faisal is with me on the program today discussing that. And Faisal, welcome back to the program. Yeah. We are talking about, you know, how do we help Africans to, you know, start beginning to take advantage of this, think beyond this. Oh. You have been going across the world, you know, as a festival programmer. You, first of all, we want to break down, you know, the different forms of arts under the performing arts you know uh you know uh, sector mm. and then you have been going around the world you know doing and performing and you know creating platform for people to perform as a programmer mm. um what are the processes that you go through when you're picking and selecting that person to go there and what kind of form of hats do you take there yeah. i mean we could be talking like this and many people actually don't know that they need to prepare themselves towards putting themselves out so that they can now begin to interact with some of this new relationship that we're talking mm. about. Yeah, I think, um, I th uh, you know, um, when you, to do the kind of work that like I do, you need to educate yourself. 
We are un uh, unfortunate that uh, we don't have uh, a school of arts management here in this country, and I don't think anywhere in East Africa. Yeah. So it's very difficult for someone to understand the, 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 the scope of the work that yeah. we do. But um, if you want to learn, to, if anyone who is in a programmer out there and who wants to really un engage in these uh, theories of, under, uh, of learning to do things differently, you have to, um, you know, study. Like, I think the bottom line, the, the, the basis of this business is really to study cultural economics. When you study cultural economics, you will understand the process of understanding culture. It's a very public, good kind of approach. Yeah. You put yourself there as a sacrifice. The way the, our president said, sacrifice did his hand mm -hmm. and kept this to himself. Yes. You know? <laughs> so you also have, no, it is serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you, you have to understand that when you learn cultural economics, you understand yeah. the basis, the basics of arts management, yeah. the basics of programming. So when you do that, then you understand that when you put yourself into this job, yeah. you are sacrificing yourself for the better good of the rest of the industry. Yeah. And that means that you're going to put your interests aside, and that's what many people don't understand, and put the interests of the industry to be your first priorities. Yeah. When people ask me, why, do you, why are you always working? Because I decided to make 99% of my time to work. And I decided not to be an artist because I realized that if I am an artist and I want to be an arts manager, I'll not be able to do the same. I put my 99% of the time in my work and then the rest 1% I share it with the people next to me. So it's a difficult situation and this is where it starts from. So you understand that the business is a public good. You have to, you have to, when you do that, then you can start looking at things. What do you do if you're a public servant? Mm -hmm. You work for the people. The people are your bosses. And if you are in a position like ours where you are supposed to kind of define the future of your own effort, then you find, you, you'll start to understand that going out there, if you have the opportunity of going out there to see people and admiring their work and bring it down to your people, to share it with, to collaborate, to network, to, you know, to, uh, to connect with the rest of the world, it becomes a normal thing to do yeah. because you already understand why you are doing it. Yeah. So for me, I think when it comes to these old relations, when, you, when it comes to this uh, uh, understanding of the performing arts, as wide as they are, there are so many, you know. But the thing is that, do we even understand our own subsectors of the performing arts? Mm -hmm. So, if you're doing theatre, how best do you understand theatre? Mm -hmm. If you do not understand theatre that much, but you're doing it, are you helping yourself to study? Mm -hmm. What kind of learning are you doing? So, it's really about people also making an effort to educate themselves, making an effort to find out what is happening within their own. Yeah territory within their own area and also trying to invest in themselves. People don't like to invest in themselves. They can invest, they think uh, finding transport and lunch to go to a, a rehearsal is investing, is the only way to invest yeah, in yourself. Yeah. But educating yourself and also trying to figure out, finding opportunities is a very good way of educating yourself. Okay. And I always ask people like, if you spend at least you know, two hours on Facebook yeah. and uh, Twitter. Why don't you invest that time in learning about your industry, about where you are and how you can better yourself? Yeah. So it's really about learning. The performing arts are wide, there are so many, but people really can only benefit from them if they understand better and they can open their minds to make sure that they're only not looking at what they are, where they are, but they're also checking out to figure out what is happening around the world. Yeah. And if you understand what is happening around the world, it helps you to kind of speed up your own process of developing yourself and doing better. Okay. Um, Faizo, uh, would you share with us one thing that is very key as we wind up the show? Break down the performing arts. What are the different subsectors under the performing arts that we need to know? Because when you're talking about performing arts, some people may not even know that they're in the performing arts. Maybe they're in the wrong sector of it. <laughs> Maybe they need to move to the next sector of it. Maybe they don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm there attracted because this is what is paying my bill right now. But perhaps my quality, my gifting is really into writing. And if I write, I make other people really look good. 
and therefore I need to spend time writing and actually focused on the writing and then I use this new africa french relationship that they're talking about that africa now is more open to begin to seek opportunity to write for other people cross border writing you know so that my script can go out then i can begin to travel across the world as opposed to being a writer and at the same time i want to be a performer and at the same time yeah i, I mean so uh, can you yeah. break that for us no i think it, of course you can be a writer and a performer but yeah. okay breaking it down like in, you know performing as we have music yes we have dance and dance is also divided. There is urban dance, there is traditional dance, there is uh, uh, folk dance, yes. there is uh, uh, contemporary dance. Yeah, yeah. And then we have uh, theatre, which we have, uh, you know, traditional theatre, like community theatre. Yeah. Then we have the, you know, high-end theatre. Yes. And then uh, also we have like a dance theatre, which is more like you find uh, the ballet, contemporary performances of like the Nutcracker yes. and all these uh, Mary Poppins and stuff like that. Then we have uh, fashion, it's a performing art. Mm -hmm. Even though someone thinking, I sit down, I'm not performing, but you create a piece and then you put it on stage for yeah. people to cut work on it, that's yeah. a performance. Yeah. Um, writing, creative writing, because yes. when you're writing, you, write, you don't write for yourself only, but you're writing for people yeah. to read yeah. and to act or to you know in uh, poetry create yes. yeah we have poetry we have uh, so i mean there's a lot we have uh, visual uh, video mapping it's a performance and sometimes i think because it's visual and video you think yes. it's a visual art no <laughs> but it's a performance because visual yeah. uh, um, video mapping has become more interactive now yeah. Yeah. and uh, it has become kind of like uh, an, in, uh, an engagement between a space mm -hmm. and the people mm -hmm. so um, and i really like to explore this and this is something i'm really cultivating with my team yes. i want to start a, a festival for video mapping yeah like light up this whole city and with different uh, different concepts and designs and stories and, yes. and uh, but it's a very expensive art form yeah. to be honest and uh, then uh, what else is there you know street theater there is a and there's a difference between uh, theater yes. in the in, in a theater and yeah. a street theater yeah uh, when I when I introduced street theatre here, I think uh, twelve years ago, yeah. uh, people thought that like, you know, it's, but it's a very mature way of acting because yeah. you don't have a script, you don't have anything. You're kind of reacting to. You can have a thought, a theme in your head, yeah. but then you're kind of reacting to uh, to a space, to the situation. So you are spontaneously engaging yeah. with people and stuff like that. So. The performing arts are wide and they are really a lot. Now, just give us a few. You've talked about a, quite a varied number of the performing arts subsectors under that. We want to just break it down. Do we have some of these former arts in Uganda that yes. are known? Because yes. we might find that we're skewed to a very few of them mm -hmm. and we don't know really many of them that are quite very important that could take advantage of. Now that we're talking about, you know, Africa being open to the Francophones, and the francophone countries being open to the africa uh, mm. yeah i think the challenge with some of the art forms are uh, they're quite um, expensive yeah. and uh, exhausting yeah. when you talk about like video mapping i mean if you're a video mapping artist in uganda where would you get a job yeah. he's gonna give you a gig you know <laughs> so you are in it for a, a being, a, a that's, being that's a why they were saying the new africa exactly. France is open so for this i think year. Uh, yeah. and also if yeah. you're a video artist yeah. here uh, you really you, I mean, it will be really hard for you to get a gig in France or Europe because they are at a whole different level yeah. when it comes to mind, when it comes to skills, when it comes to software, because all these things work with software. Yeah. Every time there's a new software, there's a new... Uh, uh, it's like being on uh, these apps that people use all the time. Yeah. Everything, all the time there's something new. And if how do you keep up with that? So some art forms would be really difficult for some of the Ugandan artists yeah. and it's not it doesn't mean that it's easy for the uh, European or the Americans it's also difficult for them but what happens with them is that first of all they have the knowledge they have schools where they go to learn this and it's recognized it means that when they come out of those schools they are respected because they learn that form of art yeah. and then when they go out in the market and they don't have gigs there is a system that helps them to survive they are given some you know capital or money to survive on even if they don't have a gig yeah. when they get a gig they can declare that they got a gig and then they don't have to claim money from the state so gig the, being business in yeah the, yeah, in, yeah. Uh, yes. so if there is that if there was a system like that and imagine eddie or young people who are and and every year there's also these opportunities like every year there's a lights festival there is a video mapping festival there's a you know all these uh uh street theater festivals 
So it means that someone is working, even though they know they are not going to get paid all the time, but they know at the end of the year there is something they look up to. And that gives them the motivation to create that kind of content. But if there is no opportunity, there is no platform for them to show their work, then it becomes difficult for them to be motivated. That's, to why, sell now it where. That's why now we're saying the new Africa relationship yes, but is it, opening uh, that room for us to now go and of say, course, oh, land, yeah, or open it, up. Of course, it opens up, yeah, yeah. but also we have to understand that we need to start working harder yes. to level the ground, to yes. start competing with the content, because also the French artists, are all, they also need gigs. Yes. So you're not going to come from here and start stepping <laughs> on their toes uh, because I'm coming from Uganda yeah, 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 and I, this yeah. is where I saw the opportunity. They'll yes. kick you up. Yes. So what, what is important is to work on merit, to work on your betterment or your, your development of your skill. Yeah. So how do we develop our skills? How do we also start offering opportunity? We are not only looking at taking our artists to France, but we're also looking at bringing the artists to to, uh, to Uganda, yeah. the French artists. So for me, what is actually more uh, useful, and this is what I've been doing over these years, yeah. is that when I see an art form or an artist and he's good, I bring them to my festival. Okay. For the reason, because I know taking one artist from here to France yeah. would cost me much more money, and maybe that person would just go and take selfies. Yeah. But if I bring <laughs> the other artists here, no, serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I bring the other artists here, yeah. then there is an opportunity for that artist to be seen by a wider number of other artists. Yeah, yeah. And maybe from those, they will start looking, hmm, how's, you know, how, how did he do that? You know, look at the, 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 the difference with Morris Kiria. Yeah. The Morris Kiria of 10 years and the Morris Kiria now. Yeah. He's, a, he's at a whole different league. Uh, talking of look it, he was, he was performing in, in Netherlands yes. uh, recently yeah. and the place was, uh, was packed. No, look at it. GNL. Seem to understand his music GNL more has been says. good yeah. since he started his yeah. music yeah. and now he's at a whole different mm -hmm. level. Yes. Exposure, interacting, collaborating, ex you know, looking at others and how they're doing things yes. and being in a space that supports the industry that he is in yeah. so we have to look at how what do we do as a people in our positions yeah. to admire what others have done for their industries yeah. and then that will give us the opportunity to start nurturing our own industries yeah. but if we only look at problems and money here pressuring people for support when you know they can't give it to you but you just need to also work on yourself be able to deliver and create the work that can take you to an, another another level yeah. and that comes with admiring others okay yeah. so it's basically what you're saying Faiso in summary is that yes the new africa france relationship is there but it's not going to be a silver plate platter mm -hmm. i mean it is still possible that people who are coming from france can take advantage of you because you don't know it and still tell your story their way and and there's no problem with it because it's open now for everyone to do that's what you're saying yeah. right yeah wow faisal thank you very much for coming to the program today we really have to bring this to a close but uh, we want to say thank you and we want to encourage all those people out there to be part of this conversation going forward and of course take this advantage of some of the things faisal is talking about and begin to widen your scope your horizon your thinking capacity your creative capacity and you know be close to people like Faisal you know be close to people who went to France tell ask them what did you learn from France how can they take advantage of it? there are many you got I think had over 20 people that went and I think these 20 people are back if they can share as much information that would be very great and Faisal one last thing as you go um you've talked about gnl and i think that there is a new nsimbi band that has created after five years of being in america he's back in east africa and i think it launched a new product this year are we going to see this new product uh, you know make its way um, around on bahimba i don't know i haven't had a, a chance to have a conversation with gnl yes, i yes. know i asked me some months ago yeah. uh, for a meeting but i haven't really had i've been also busy yes. but i think um it's you know i, I admire the work mm. i admire the level of creativity yeah. and the maturity in it and i think it's it's one way of returning that kind of talent to yeah. our country yeah. to inspire other young people yeah. and i think he has a mission to also engage more young uh, artists to learn from him to to uh, to be helped by his work that he's doing so that they can also move another step forward so that's really a spirit of uh, ubuntu the spirit of uh, 
nurturing others because he's been nurtured. He's yeah. gone through a process whereby other people have helped him and now he's coming back to help others. I think it's a very genuine thing and I'm looking forward to uh, working with him, inshallah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you very much, Ivadi, from there. So I asked that question because if somebody's doing something important, I think that it's important for us to actually be able to support them to make sure that, you know, we give them opportunity to be part of that. And I think GNL right now has that form of art coming. There's a Kinobe who has a new thing yeah. and is thinking of coming back home and showcasing it here. Are we going to see this, some of this new art you know, coming they, back you know, to they, it, back. It's, it's, it's fascinating. It's yes, fascinating yes. because Kinobe, what, yeah. what has been happening is yeah. that uh, most of the people they had nowhere to go yes you know like like kinobe you know if he comes here where is he going to perform yes except in maybe at indere center yeah. which is you know might be not ideal for his sound yes the national theater is too small for him yes. so we need to start thinking for yes. our artists and start and, and we need to start thinking like okay even if jnl wants to put up a concert yeah. where Serena, that's not a concert place. Okay, we use it because it's what we have. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. So we start. We need to start thinking for our artists. Like, if we have this talent and we need them, we appreciate them. How do we start planning and preparing for them? Yeah. And that's not a responsibility of only us the, in the in the in the performing arts industry or the programmers, but it's a, a responsibility of everyone in the planning, the government, in all this stuff. We need to start looking at. All these people, even for example, all these young kids they are sending out to work in, in, in the Middle East. Yeah. What do we plan for them? Okay, they go, they work for two years and whatever they collect, when they come back, what do they find? What, what, what are we planning for them? <laughs> I think it's important yes, yes. that we, we know, okay, when you send someone to acquire a skill, yeah. you have to make sure that when they come back with that skill, they, they find where they can practice that yes, skill. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. So if we have all these great musicians, the Kinobes, the Ntare Guma Mwine, we have, uh, you know, JNL now, we have uh, uh, Oscar, we have all, so many in contemporary dance, in film, in theater, you know, they are all out there making headlines. The Daniel Kaluyas, they are yes. making headlines. Yes. When they come home, what do they find? So it's basically an opportunity for everyone who is investing now to say, let's invest in a bigger platform. I was, I was actually thinking yes. you know, recently, I was, yeah. I was driving around and I saw all these Sudil buildings yes, it's yes. putting up. And I'm like, the, because he's an investor yeah. and he has an opportunity and he has so many stuff that he's working on in his head. Yes. But does this, the capital city authority sit with this guy and tell him like, okay, you're an investor, you're a real estate investor. But this is our plan as a city. Mm -hmm. As you're thinking of uh, building a hotel here, a mall here, can you also work with us, you know, to create some of the things that we want as a city? So that we, because it's your space, it's your investment, but these are some of the ideas we have, we need for this city. You get what I mean? Yes, yes. Can you think around, instead of building 10, 15 hotels, can also build a theater here? Can you also put a black box here? Can you put a, a, a studio here? Can you add it to, in your plan? Yeah. I'll, I'll, that would be really smart, you know, because he's already investing. Yeah. He's putting in, like I see him, he's adding another uh, wing at Kabira. What if, he, you know, that space, I would imagine putting a theater there. Instead of those uh, box rooms, you know, putting <laughs> a theater there. Oh, uh, yeah, one of the yeah, one yeah, of the halls and making yeah, it perform. Because you're now speaking you're like have, a performing no, artist, no, a like, programmer, yes. Like you have a hotel here yeah, yeah. and then people can stay, stay yeah. there. And then you have a performing space here. You know, it's, it's Where in the people middle. Where can actually exactly. come. It, it, it creates that yeah. ambience. It and then you that can area. see that, you know, you, you, you put one in, in that area, Bokoto, it serves mm -hmm. in Tinder, yeah. serves whatever. And then when, if he's investing mm -hmm. at Simba Manyo, now he owns it, I hear. Yes, yes. Then you can also put, you know, put something like yes. that supports that community there. Yes, yes. You know, you plan with the city. I wonder whether they have this conversation because I don't see it happening. Perhaps we need to bring this conversation. There. I mean, well, the creative industry talk is meant to bring the policymakers together. And we've been trying to get the policymakers to come to basically have this conversation with the creative minds.
the policy people were in the policy business to say hey come together and let's have a conversation maybe we need to engage some of these people perhaps some of these things are not out and they are not aware and it, it's something that we need to think through but well thank you very much Faisal welcome first of all for coming to the program today we've got to spread love no 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 the spread love is spread from here and then you spread the love outside to the rest of the people and uh, we want to say thank you for coming and looking forward to having you again back on the show and of course visiting Lumkulu if you haven't visited Lumkulu Island please do and uh, Faisal has an amazing place there in the island just between Buikwe and Mukono Please visit Lunkulo Island and see the new theater and uh, some of the fantastic stuff coming into that forest in the island. And of course, you will be amazed. That is the moment that brings us to the, you know, the close of the creative industry talk today. Until next time, we stay, stay blessed, stay focused, stay creating, stay creative and take advantage of the opportunities available to you. And of course, stay away from the disease that might destroy you before you achieve your dreams. Edio Killer, Pfizer Chihuahua, signing out.